Well, hello everybody out there and happy Christmas to you. Uh, welcome to our St. John's uh, virtual service where we're just going to share some of the joy of Christmas with you and we hope that you are able to share with the, your loved ones today, whether that's uh, together or whether you're having to phone or sort of Zoom one another. Uh, we just hope that you are having a, a good time uh, remembering that Jesus Christ came into the world to bring us light and hope. Normally, it's, uh, my, it's my task to try to pick somebody to light the fifth candle uh, on the um, Advent candle wreath uh, to remind us that Jesus has come into the world and since then, things have been changing. He's changed uh, our futures when we join him, when we trust him. Um, but there's nobody here to pick on today, so there's nobody to ask, how early did you get up or how far have you travelled? I mean, that's not even possible, is it? Uh, but I will light this candle to remind all of us uh, that light has come into the world to save us from the darkness. The darkness of the world and the darkness in each of us. So as we pray, as we remember that Christ came into the world, let's pray. God our Father, whose word has come amongst us in the holy child of Bethlehem, May the light of faith illuminate our hearts, shine in our words and deeds, through him who is Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Well, we know that Christ came in to change the world. He talked about all sorts of things that he would do, and if we followed him, we would discover the life of God with him. We're going to remind ourselves of the Lord's blessing on those of us who follow him and put our trust in him. Let's hear our Lord's blessing on those who trust him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Well, as we think about the life that Jesus Christ has shown us and called us to, we know that we fall short, but we also pray in confidence of his love and his mercy and his grace that he will take those things from us. Father eternal, giver, of light and grace. We have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, and through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins so for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Well, it's my great privilege as a minister in the church to pronounce God's forgiveness upon us, who, those of us who turn to him in faith. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Well, the reading this morning is from John chapter 1, verses 1 through to 14. If you want to follow that in a Bible at home, that's lovely. There's loads of great words and encouraging things going on in that passage. So let's read this together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of John begins with this profound explanation of Jesus' relationship with God the Father that the Word, who is Jesus, was also God, that he was the same but separate essence of God, but most importantly, the Word was with God. It tells us how God interacts both with himself, within himself and also through others, through relationship. It's how he works, one and another. But Jesus surpasses them because he was with God in the beginning. Whatever we want to understand about our life, it is in God's hands. He began it, and through Jesus Christ, brings both life to us. John describes it, this life, as being the right to be called children of God, a new relationship with God as Heavenly Father. And that is what Jesus offers us, the same kind of relationship with God that he himself had. He was open with God, honest and soaked in love of God. His approach to God the Father was not tarnished by failure or doubt or darkness, but with a sense of being loved by God for who he was. He had a purpose and he had a certainty about his destiny. The other gods of the time that John is writing about were capricious. They were teasing, distant, unpredictable, and even fey. Jesus was none of those things. He was present. He was grounded in human life and human experience. Even though he was always in touch with the Heavenly Father, he knew what it was to be human. The quality of his life stood out to others, it was like an unstoppable light that came into the darkness and invited people in. To those who knew Jesus and witnessed his life, he stood out as an altogether different quality of person, a different standard or order of man. He is described by them as being full of grace and truth. Grace is God's particular quality to act lovingly towards people, even though we've done nothing to deserve it. In fact, the way we live is often opposite to deserving and receiving the kindness God is willing to give us. 
instead of the reckoning we all actually merit. God's attitude towards us then and now is loving, forgiving and kind because he is just and because he is loving. It is how he is towards us. Jesus was also described as being full of truth, an altogether different order of living, always doing the right thing, doing what the Father called him to do, and treating each person and each situation as though the person was being loved by God right there and then. Sometimes this meant speaking truth into hearts that were broken and needed healing. Perhaps that's how we feel at the moment. Sometimes he spoke truth into hearts that were hard and stubborn and needed breaking so that they could know that they themselves were loved in a way they had not known before. We do not need to merely imagine what that was like because Jesus still lives and speaks today by the Holy Spirit and through his word. We can hear his voice. We can understand how he is speaking to our very hearts, calling us into that deeper relationship with God, the Heavenly Father. And we can feel safe and secure because Jesus was perfect. No one, no one has ever found fault with Jesus. He lived perfectly before God and fully amongst mankind. The way he lived made truth alive, illuminating and real, touching everyone he met in the most profound way. It draws our attention to the love of God. There were those who chose not to accept that invitation, and for them life would remain confusing, random and limited by their own horizon and perspective. But for those who accept the invitation, Jesus gives the light of heavenly holy, everlasting life. Amen. Shall we pray together? In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Father, your Son, our Saviour, was born in human flesh. We, renew, we pray that you would renew the church as the body of Christ. We thank you for the ways in which we've been able to do new things. We pray that we would continue to grow. Holy God, hear our prayer. Father, there was no room for your son in the inn. We asked that you protect with your love those who have no home and who live in poverty. Holy God, hear our prayer. Mary, in the pain of labor, brought your son to birth. We ask that you hold in your hand all we know and care for who are in pain or distress. We ask that you give them courage and peace. Holy God, hear our prayer. Father, your Christ came as light, shining in the darkness. We ask that you would bring comfort to all who suffer the sadness of this world for the impact of depression and anxiety and sense of failure and fear that so many are struggling with this year. Holy God, hear our prayer. The angels sang peace to God's people on earth. Father, we pray that you would strengthen those who work for peace and justice, for those who work in medicine and health care, that you would strengthen them in bringing your peace and comfort wherever they are. Holy God, hear our prayer. Father, the shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy. 
we ask that you give us grace to preach the gospel of Christ's redemption, his saving work that brings us to joy amongst those we know and love. May your words reach the hearts of those who need to hear them. Holy God, hear our prayer. Father, Christians the world over celebrate Christ's birth. We ask that you open our own hearts, that he would be born in us today, that we would rediscover the truth and joy, the life, the light that Jesus brings to each and every one of us. Holy God, hear our prayer. Father, angels and shepherds, worshipped at the manger throne. And wherever we are, and whatever we are doing and able to do, we pray that you would receive the worship we offer in fellowship through him who is your word made flesh, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to share communion, uh, it's wonderful to remind ourselves that the community uh, of which we are part, that Jesus Christ has started and continues to build. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up in these difficult times our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. we come to a time of communion together. Let's pray. The Lord is here and his spirit is with us. Lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give thanks and praise. It's right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper, with his friends. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. And as we eat these drink and eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. And so though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Amen. Let's pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world and keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I do hope you have as good a Christmas day as is possible. We do look forward to being in touch. Remember, there are so many things that we are doing online that we can quickly uh, be in touch with you, and you can join in the fellowship in other ways. Uh, there'll be a short pause for daily updates for this week, uh, but we'll be back to encourage you into the new year. Uh, as soon as possible. So our closing blessing. Almighty God, as your blessed Son, Jesus Christ, first came to seek and save the lost, so may he come again to find in us the completion of his redeeming work. For he is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit for God forever and ever. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen.